Agent K-7 returns. America's number one adventurer, K-7, former United States secret agent who operated in 22 countries, on land, on sea, and in the air, brings you another story of today. Here is K-7. Ladies and gentlemen, in the troubled world of today, those who attempt to upset the peace between nations have many means at their disposal. One of the most powerful is the radio, and the illegal use of this medium has repeatedly brought nations to the verge of crises. Stories of the illegal use of radio overseas appear in newspapers frequently. The menace is very real. It is such a story which my old friend John Holbrook introduces now. Thank you, K-7. A few months ago, international spies succeeded in making the people of a nation, which we shall not name, distrustful of their government and their leaders. It was a carefully planned move, involving even the bribing of officials. And thousands of citizens were listening to the radio speeches of the agitators. These came on the air each afternoon and each evening. Our story opens as Special Agent Z and his assistant, Patricia Norwood, wait for such a broadcast. It'll take a minute for the tubes to warm up, Pat. But Z, how do you know when the broadcast will come on? I don't know, and neither does anyone else except the plotters. However, it's usually about now. Here, come over to this window. All right. You see the knot of people gathered down there? Yes. This thing has actually reached a point where the people crowd in front of stores and listen to what the agitators say on the broadcast. But what of the police? They make no attempt to break up the gatherings. I've even seen one listening. Pat, unless we act fast, there'll be revolution here. It's coming. The signs are unmistakable. Hello, citizen. Listen, Pat, here's the broadcast. The men who head your government have again taken steps against you, the people they are supposed to represent. These criminals, so-called lawmakers who take your money in taxes and give you nothing in return, have now taken further steps to curb your liberties. Daily they have blocked out these broadcasts, denying you the right to listen to the truth. However, tonight there will be a broadcast which will not be interrupted. It will come on the air at exactly 9 o'clock. It's a message that will be very important. Every citizen should listen. V, what does it mean? I don't know, Pat. This message will be repeated in an hour or two. Now I must warn you of another menace to your liberty. Your crooked lawmakers have today imported two spies. One who calls himself Special Agent Z and a woman assistant. You're talking of us. Listen. These two have been brought here to stop these broadcasts. They must be driven from the country. I want you to know them. And so I am going to describe them. We are fortunate. That interference was caused by a government station coming on the air on the same wavelength. It's the method used to block out these broadcasts. But he had just started to describe us, Dean. How do they know, well, that we're here? I don't know, Pat, but be thankful that our description didn't reach the people. We'd be mobbed on the streets. This is a carefully laid plot, and one that we've got to stop before night. But how? And listen carefully. The man, whoever he is, may have given us a lead when he said this message will be repeated within an hour. Does that mean that he'll finish his description of it then? Well, I don't know. But when he repeats his message, we'll be in a plane circling over the city. We'll use a direction finder and locate the part of the city the broadcast comes from. You mean the radio direction finder will tell us where the transmitter is located? Well, it'll give us a good idea. Now let's get out to the airport. We've got less than an hour to get ready and get into the air. A 
A short time later, Z and Patricia Norwood took off in Z's plane and began to circle lazily over the city. Pat was at the plane's controls while Z worked over the radio direction finder. Both wore earphones. It's been over an hour since the last broadcast, Z. Yes. We should hear something soon. Attention, all citizens. Here it comes. It's weak. Circle to the left. Every I'll swing at once, Z. Returning to listen to a vital message to be broadcast by this station. We're headed in the right direction. The signal's getting louder. We'd have no fear that Keep this going straight ahead. I will, will be Z. interrupted by interference, which has blocked our past messages to you. For on this occasion, we have taken steps to see that this... The station happen. must be right under us. The, the signal is cold. To <laughs> There's the interference again. Get off the radio. Now look below us. A group of buildings. What are they, Z? Those are the buildings of the Capitol, Pat. The Capitol? The government buildings? But the broadcast couldn't come Oh, no, it doesn't seem possible, does it? But we know officials have been bribed. Well, we'll soon find out. Turn back to the airport. We're going to land and do some investigating. A few minutes later, Z entered the office of the Patriot, who was responsible for bringing him into the case. There, he asked a few terse questions. How many radio transmitters are there in the communications building? Three. Two regular transmitters and one emergency set. I see. And do all three of them operate from the city's power lines? Yes, of course. Oh, no. Two of them operate from the city's power. The third, the emergency transmitter, has its own bank of storage batteries. Then, if the city's power should fail, that transmitter would continue to function? Yes. It was designed for use in case of floods or storms. That's all I want to know. Now, I want two passes. One that'll give entry to the communications building, the other to the city power plant. Hurry, I have less than three hours before nine o'clock. night, shortly before nine o'clock, a lone figure paused at the gate which led to the great generating plant which served the city with electricity. She showed her pass to the watchman. Here is my pass, monsieur. Uh -huh. yeah, it seems official, mademoiselle, but you will have to go on alone. I cannot leave my post. There are about two men on duty in the turbine room at night. If I call one... Oh, that will not be necessary. I can find my way. Thank you, monsieur. All right. The door is straight ahead, mademoiselle. The hum of the great mercury turbines guided Pat to the door of the turbine room. She opened it cautiously. Two men stood before a large switchboard. A small radio was on the desk at their side. It was one half minute before nine o'clock. The men were watching the clock. Pat made her way behind the switchboard without being seen. It's almost time. At exactly nine o'clock, we will pull the switch and plunge the west end of the city into darkness. Then Papula will speak. Yeah, 20 seconds. Gota, lock the door. We should have done it an hour ago. No one must enter here until Papula's speech is over. I take care of it. I the key. Good. Remove the telephone receiver from the hook. When I pull this switch, the government buildings and the section around them will be in darkness. Now, most of the government officials live in that neighborhood. We do not want the fools calling. People in the West End will not be able to hear Papula. Their radios will be silent with no electricity. Now, what of it? I just finished telling you that mostly government officials live there. It is better if they do not hear what is in store for them. Now, we are ready. Power is off. Papula can speak without interference. Listen. Good evening, fellow citizens. Tonight my message comes to you in full. It will not be blocked out by interference from the government stations. We have taken care of that. The electricity which runs the other transmitters has been turned off. Now I can talk to you. I can tell you what we have to do of the acts which we are to carry out. Tonight. Put up your hands and stop talking. I place you under arrest, Marius Popula. What 
was that? What has happened? Yes, something is wrong. Did you hear the words? I place you under arrest? Yes. Papula has been seized. Quick, throw the switch. They will come here for us. Wait, we must be sure. Listen. Your radio is dead. Papula has been arrested. Someone has told the officials. We must throw the switch. And put the light on. Citizens, Marius, Papula, and his men have just been placed under arrest. <laughs> It is true. Do you hear? Shut up. He had planned to seize your government, to rob it, and to rob you. In just a minute, your president will address you. However, first I have a private message for my assistant. Pat, seize the men at the power plant. But did you hear that? What does it mean? It means that I'm here what? to place you under arrest. Huh? Put your hands over your head. Both of you. She was hidden behind the switchboard. Who are you? I am Special Agent Z's assistant. Keep your hands up. What? What are you going to do with us? Perhaps if you listen, you will find out. Hold your prisoners, Pat. Help is on the way to you. It should arrive within a minute or two. And now, citizens, may I present your president, the man who has crushed this plot against your government. Listen to his message of peace. My countrymen, tonight might well have seen the end of our great republic. We were on the very brink of disaster. Once again, Special Agent Z and his assistant, Patricia Norwood, have helped avert war and seize the men who plotted against the government. Radio is a great force in the world today. It must be used as the voice of peace, a voice that spreads goodwill among nations. Listen for my next story. This is K7 speaking.